I became aware of the politics of culture at a young age. My father was from Iraq, and my mother's from Colombia. We lived in New York, and it was part of everyday conversation to be asked, where are you from? Rather than saying Iraq and Colombia, my parents often said Turkey and Spain. <laughs> I was confused as a child. Why would my parents lie about where they're from? And I started observing that whenever they did say Iraq and Colombia, they'd be met with questions about terrorists and drug dealers or more subtle questions about how they made their money. And I wondered, why would people have such assumptions about my parents? My brother and I, as children, we loved Hollywood movies, and we would cheer in delight when the evil Arab terrorist or the Latino drug dealer were killed by the hero. And I slowly came to realize that such assumptions about identity were not just the result of particular news stories being repeated, but part of everyday popular culture. Jack Shaheen, in his 2001 book, Real Bad Arabs, he examines approximately 900 Hollywood films produced between 1896 and 2001. And he shows that Arabs have predominantly been portrayed as harem girls, oppressed veiled women, rich oil sheiks, and terrorists. Arab identities have appeared predominantly in storylines about an imaginary and exotic East, and increasingly as a place of religious extremists and threats to U.S. national security. Out of the over 900 films that Shaheen surveys, he characterizes approximately 50 as even-handed and only 12 as containing positive portrayals of Arabs. We can see the impact of such stereotypes on public opinion polls. A 2004 poll showed that 44% of Americans believed that some curtailment of civil liberties was necessary for Arabs and Muslims. So for example, that immigrants should register their location with the federal government, or that they should be closely monitored by undercover law enforcement. And a 2006 poll showed that 22% of Americans would not want a Muslim as a neighbor. FBI statistics show that after 9-11, hate crimes against Muslims multiplied by 1,600%. And while this number has decreased since then, hate crimes continue to be commonplace. I asked some University of Michigan students who are Arab and Muslim American how this history of representations has impacted their experiences, and here is a snapshot of what they said. Do you guys have cars where you're from, or do you just take camels everywhere? Do you live in a pyramid, or do you ride camels? Or... Question. People ask me if my dad beats me or not. Where are you from? He's like, are you from India? Oh, you're from Afghanistan. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And we walked into a Burger King. And one of the people working behind the counter looked at the person next to him and said, oh, she speaks English good. I am a college-educated woman. <laughs> like, of course I speak English well. <laughs> True lies. That one was actually big. I do remember that one. Why, why is this image being put out of people that I know? I mean, I know Palestinians. I am a Palestinian. Uh, I've never met anybody like this, so why, why, is, why am I on TV looking like this? It was definitely confusing, was I think the best way to put it as a young child. Stereotypes have a range of impacts, from interpersonal relationships and public opinions to government policies. They have the power to justify war, invasions, and torture. Images have been used throughout history to justify inequality and exclusion. Before and during the Jim Crow era, African-American men were portrayed as violent, inarticulate, and lazy, and African-American women were portrayed as hypersexual or as mammies who are happy servants. Such pervasive images help to create the logic needed to justify the Jim Crow system of segregation that was in place for almost a century. Since 9-11, there has been a shift in how Arabs and Muslims are portrayed in the media. 
if an Arab or Muslim is portrayed as a terrorist in a particular storyline, then typically now a positive portrayal of an Arab or Muslim is inserted, seemingly to offset or dilute the stereotype. Now, my objective today is not to criticize the work of writers and producers. I have been a pop culture junkie my whole life, and people often ask me, you watch that? As if professors aren't supposed to enjoy popular culture. But yes, I watch that. <laughs> so I'm not here to criticize writers and producers. I'm here to shed light on how our thinking about stereotypes has changed over time, and particularly to shed light on our current cultural logic. So this brings me to my central question. Does a positive image negate or cancel out a negative one? In my research, I have found two main types of positive images of Arabs and Muslims in the media since 9-11. The first is a patriotic Arab or Muslim American who's willing to fight and die for the United States. This is a character who's often a CIA agent, FBI agent, or a civilian who's helping the government fight terrorism. And second, a victimized Arab or Muslim American. This is someone who's been the unjust target of post 9-11 hate crimes or discrimination. And uh, this character often faces harassment on the street, has been removed from flights, or has been unjustly detained by the government. These images are an improvement over past portrayals but they do raise a few issues, three of which I'd like to mention. First, regarding the patriotic Arab American, is this the only way that we can imagine a quote-unquote good Arab or Muslim American? Must he or she conform so, to such a narrow conception of what US patriotism is? Regarding the victim, this sympathetic character often appears in a storyline that justifies discrimination against them. So we could be watching a TV drama that's very sympathetic about how a particular Arab American was the unjust target of post 9-11 discrimination, and then the storyline will conclude that it is unfortunate and unjust, but necessary, that Arabs and Muslims face a suspension of their civil rights because of the national security crisis. And third, the context of terrorism remains. So we're getting to know positive characters, but evaluating them and understanding them still in this context of terrorism. So on the one hand, we have an increase in sympathetic and positive portrayals of Arabs and Muslims in the media, but on the other, these very same images are often in narratives that justify exclusion against them or that reaffirm an association with terrorism. Going back to the Mammy image, this seemingly positive image helped to create the logic that African-American women were happy as servants and helped to uphold a larger system of inequality. This shows that we must broaden our analysis beyond whether an image is good or bad to consider the logic that it creates, and particularly logics that justify inequality and exclusion whether it's intentional or not, and in today's day and age, it's often unintentional. Nigerian author Chimamanda Adichie, in her brilliant TED Talk in 2009, she states that the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but that they are incomplete. She says that the danger in repeating the same story about a people and thus creating a stereotype is that it robs them of their humanity. There are approximately 300 million Arabs and 1.2 billion Muslims worldwide. A story about them as terrorists could not possibly capture their diverse experiences. Now, I do want to mention that I don't think there's anything wrong with portraying Arabs and Muslims as terrorists. The problem is not that they're portrayed as terrorists. The problem is that they're rarely portrayed in other contexts. So what I would like to propose today is that the way to reduce stereotypes and increase our collective humanity is not to increase, to insert a positive representation of an Arab to a story about them as terrorists, but rather the way to reduce stereotypes is to tell so many different stories about Arabs and Muslims 
that the terrorist one becomes just one of many. Reducing stereotypes is not a matter of adding positive images to negate the negative ones. Reducing stereotypes is a matter of having a diverse field of representations so that one story does not have the power to define an entire group of people. There have been a few important efforts through which we can draw inspiration. The character Abed on the sitcom Community, he's Palestinian-American, and he's a really weird guy. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with his ethnicity. And in addition to having power as storytellers, we actually have power as audiences, too. So the very fact that writers and producers are inserting these positive images into storylines right now shows that some of us are sick and tired of the same old stereotypes. And writers and producers are responding. Representations and cultural logics do change. But we must be vigilant. We cannot assume that we're post-discrimination because Barack Obama is the president and because Arabs and Muslims are being portrayed as patriotic Americans during the war on terror. Sure, we could continue to tell the same stories about Arabs as terrorists and insert a positive image to dilute the stereotype. We could say that's good enough and that these are images and that they don't matter. Or we can try to increase our collective humanity. And we can recognize that stereotypes have the power to impact our interpersonal relationships, our perceptions and assumptions, public opinions, and government policies that have often justified war, inequality, and death. It is up to us to untap the potential of storytelling. Thank you.